Hi and welcome to Elite Mind Academy. My name is Paweł Potasiński and I'm a CTO at Elite Mind, a company specialized in modern data warehousing, supporting adoption of BI solutions in the organizations and enriching BI with AI-based solutions. Snowflake is a data platform built for, from, the up, from the ground up for the cloud. It's designed to handle data pipelines, data warehousing, data lakes, data application development and building data exchanges. It is available as a software as a service solution on three major clouds, Microsoft Azure, AWS and Google Cloud Platform. Last year, Snowflake was classified for the first time as a data warehouse market leader in Gartner's Magic Quadrant. In this series, we will share some insights on Snowflake's key concepts, architecture, useful and unique features, and integration with Microsoft Azure services from the modern data warehousing and business intelligence perspective. So with that, let me start by introducing the key concepts and the architecture of Snowflake. Let's start with the key concepts and architecture of Snowflake. Snowflake is designed to be a complete SQL database. So you can use your SQL skills from any relational database to move into the Snowflake's world and query your data. The difference between Snowflake and typical data, database management systems is that Snowflake is, non, is, is, is zero management or practically zero management or near zero management database, which means that you will not see any kind of tweaks for performance tuning in Snowflake, or maybe slightly you will see, you will see a few of them. So you will not see indexes or partitioning or typical mechanism, mechanisms used for performance tuning in Snowflake. It is also designed to store all the, all the data that you, may, that you may require to store, which means that it's not just for relational, relational data, but also it is designed to store semi-structured data as well as access non-structured data, which can, be, which can be stored within your cloud storages. It is also designed for handling uh, any number of users because it's uh, it, because of its natural way to scale out and to access the store the storage and the databases using different different uh, many different compute compute uh, compute power clusters and also it is designed as a cloud solution as a software as a service solution it is designed designed to uh, pay for only what is used so you will not be charged whether whenever your compute power is turned uh, turned off, and also it is designed to uh, to live uh, to share the data securely. So um, you can exchange exchange the data using Snowflake with your business partners or customers. At the, at the baseline of this of this key concepts, um, there is a new architecture for data warehousing that was uh, that was invented actually by Snowflake, and it reminds a bit of the architecture that is used for big data solutions. So uh, traditionally, we we we've seen two two types of architectures um, of architecture in data warehousing. The first one was also was a shared disk which means that uh, a single database uh, was accessed by a single cluster of, of machines uh, to, uh, to, per, to perform computation and, and queries. And uh, the second one uh, was based on the shared nothing assumption, which means that uh, when there, was, there, is, there is a single cluster uh, of, of machines, but every single machine has its own, uh, has its own uh, storage. And the uh, data is uh, is actually uh, distributed among uh, among um, different parts of the storage, but every single part of the storage is accessed by one one machine from the cluster, and it is also uh, known as a massively parallel processing MPP, and it's a typical design for uh, what we see uh, on the market uh, for data warehousing. So with Snowflake, there is an int introduction of new uh, new architecture for data warehousing. It is called multi-cluster shared data, and um, uh, the, the the idea is that you will see the data stored within your databases in a central uh, centralized scale-out storage, 
but this data will be accessed by my, multiple uh, independent compute clusters, which can uh, not just uh, scale up uh, to, to, um, per, to perform uh, queries more efficiently, but also it can scale out to handle, uh, to handle um, growing workloads and growing number of users. So that's the difference between Snowflake's architecture and the typical architectures you can meet uh, in data warehouses. This architecture is actually three-layered. So you will see a centralized storage. So within a single account of Snowflake, you can create as many databases as you wish. But, but each database can be accessed by multiple clusters, which are responsible for loading the data, ad hoc analytics, so your SQL queries, as well as the development. So uh, SQL code will be actually run within this um, this compute compute um, compute where data warehouses so virtual warehouses this is the compute the compute uh, layer of the architecture and the third layer is the uh, global services layer which is responsible for uh, storing metadata for uh, optimization of the queries for management uh, for user management for the transactions uh, which provides the ACID um, uh, com compatibility. So you will see transaction, uh, transactional processing actually uh, inside uh, Snowflake. You can implement transactions as well. So uh, those three layers are, are actually separated from each other and they can be accessed separately. The different operations uh, that, you will, that you will perform on Snowflake account will be performed within different layers. Uh, which also means that uh, you can save money because not all operations require you to to, to run virtual warehouse. Uh, so the compute layer, which is per, which is uh, the most expensive of those three. And remember the name. This is multi-cluster shared data um, built for the cloud, actually, as as Snowflake states on its uh, in the, in its documentation. And uh, if you refer to uh, to the uh, Snowflake on Azure installations, you will see four editions available. So uh, standard, premier, enterprise, and business critical. And uh, this is uh, one edition less than in AWS. In AWS, you will see also virtual private Snowflake available, which means that Snowflake can be run uh, in a dedicated uh, set of virtual machines running in uh, in um, customer subscription so this is not available in Azure at the moment but you will see that uh, you can you can run uh, you can run um, snowflake on Azure as well uh, using using uh, its full potential including multi-cluster data warehousing so um, basically uh, typically you would you would like to to, to see that the, the full potential of snowflake you would start with the enterprise edition uh, which uh, which um, contains this multi-cluster warehousing uh, capabilities, and um, th this this uh, this databases this uh, this accounts are available in seven Azure regions regions at the moment, and uh, in Europe specifically where I reside, uh, I, I would use West Europe, the only the only region uh, supporting um, supporting Snowflake at the moment. So seven region, regions uh, and uh, four editions. Um, enterprise uh, is is the mm, probably the, the most the most often uh, chosen uh, chosen uh, addition. And uh, how Snowflake integrates with uh, with Azure? It it, it has uh, built-in integration with uh, with different uh, Azure services. To name to name a few of them. You can build your uh, identity management in Azure Active Directory and uh, seamlessly uh, log in with Azure Active Directory uh, user accounts into the Snowflake. Uh, you can stage your data in Azure Blob Storage or Azure Data Lake, data lake Storage of any generation in, in, a, in order to bring the data into Snowflake or unload the data from Snowflake to your data lake. You can use Data Factory to uh, ingest data and orchestrate the, the data uh, loading, loading pipelines, uh, so your ELT process. You can also use big data solutions like HD Insight and Azure Databricks. 
uh, due to um, rich connectivity provided by by Snowflake. So JDBC, ODBC, .NET, uh, .NET drivers for different uh, different um, languages and the different different platforms. You can you can easily connect to Snowflake from those from those services. Uh, in order to perform some uh, sophisticated uh, data transformations, ad hoc operations, and maybe uh, even machine learning model preparations. Uh, you can also use uh, Azure Key Vault. It requires you to run business critical edition of Snowflake, but you can you can use Azure Key Vault to store your um, encryption keys, as well as you can connect to Snowflake using Microsoft Power BI as your uh, self service uh, or enterprise. Uh, BI tool. So as you can see, Snowflake's uh, integration with Azure is quite rich. And uh, in the next episodes, uh, we will demonstrate how to integrate Snowflake uh, with different different um, Azure services. So the next the next episode will be uh, an introduction to uh, Web UI of Snowflake. So Snowflake basically offers the offers the Web UI that allows you to access. Uh, to access Snowflake account and perform your SQL, SQL operations, SQL queries on top of the data that you store in Snowflake. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I explained what Snowflake is and presented its key concepts and architecture. In the next episode, I will walk you through the web UI of Snowflake and uh, I will show you how to work with Snowflake's objects. So stay tuned and subscribe the channel if you like the content. See you.